Just to be very brief tonight, inshallah. Yesterday, uh, I mentioned how Surah so Al-Rum, Allah mentions, فَانْظُرْ إِلَىٰ آثَارِ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Allah is commanding, instructing the believers to observe at the signs and the evidences and the traces of Allah's mercy. They are present and evident in the universe, uh, in our lives, in our experiences, in the Sharia, and in all aspects, you will see traces of Allah's mercy. Indeed, Rahmati, Allah says, Rahmati wasi'at kulla shay. Allah's mercy encompasses all things. Everything in existence is encompassed by Allah's mercy, His compassion. And as we know, Allah's most prominent name after Allah is Ar Rahman. A lot of signs just from that angle that every surah out of 114 except one starts with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. There's a lot of, there's a very good case one can make that Allah uh, is, uh, it's actually not even a case, it's evident, it's ma'noon bin darura, it's well known by necessity that Allah is a Rahman and His mercy far outweighs or at least uh, surpasses and outweighs his, his wrath as we know from the hadith. So one, and we mentioned one um, manifestation of that is how the ayat of Surah Al-A'raf, Allah mentions how even uh, he makes uh, the messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he has prohibited for the believers that which is khabith. يُحِلُّ لَهُمُ الطَّيِّبَاتِ He makes halal for them all, all pure and good things are halal. وَيُحَرِّمُ عَلَيْهِمْ الْخَبَائِثِ And he makes haram for Muslims all evil and wicked things. So there is nothing that is haram that a Muslim should long for. No, it's, it's actually bad for you even if it seems attractive or appealing. We should have the confidence and conviction that Allah is telling us, no, it's only haram because out of Allah's mercy, he, he wants to ward you off of its evil. There is evil, there is bad in that thing, whether it's riba or, or, or a drink or a food or a relationship, whatever it is that is forbidden, it is only forbidden out of Allah's wisdom and His mercy. It is not arbitrary. On the flip side, so today I'll add the second point I was thinking of, I was planning to add yesterday. The same logic applies on the converse. So things that are haram out of Allah's mercy, he has made it, uh, 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 things that are evil, he's made it prohibited for us. There are some things on the flip side that are so good for us. Allah in his wisdom, our creator, he knows. They are so good for human beings, he makes them mandatory. The things that are obligatory, mandatory, that is not because arbit that is not for any reason except that it is so good for us. Allah does not want us to survive and live on this earth without doing those things. Number one on that list is, of course, knowing our Creator, knowing our purpose. Allah has made it mandatory for us to know who Allah is. It is talabul ilmi, as I mentioned before. It is a faridah, to seek knowledge. Which knowledge? Knowledge of the, the deen, knowledge which will bring you salvation. That is not extra credit. That is a faridah, that is a must, mandatory for every human being to get to know, to make an effort to get to know the truth, to make an effort to get to know his or her creator. That is mandatory. Why? Because that is the most important thing. That's why we exist. It is mandatory for us to use our brain. The reason why we have intellects is not to be to get a PhD or to be a doctor or to be whatever. The number one reason is to get to, to, to figure out why do we exist, to answer these fundamental questions of our purpose and of our existence, and ultimately to know, to, to reconnect with our creator and to find his true religion Islam, which he has sent to his last, me to his last messenger. Uh, by extension of that, things, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, the salawat, the five prayers, these are, again, these are things that are so necessary. We, as, as Muslims, as believers, we believe in something that is unseen. The first description of the believers in the Quran is Surah Al-Baqarah, الَّذِينَ هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Who are the mutaqeen? الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ This is the first description in the Quran. From the beginning, from Fatiha and, and Baqarah, describing what taqwa is. The people of taqwa are those who believe in the unseen. In order for us to sustain a belief in things that we cannot see, right? Allah, Akhirah, angels, all these, we can't see these things. We need reminders, right? That's, 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 we can't sustain belief without reminders, without coming to the masjid, right? Without praying multiple times, without being with believers, right? So the five daily prayers are a must, right? Without this, God knows we would be diverted from our true purpose, we'd be distracted by this alluring dunya, right? The five prayers are a must, 
And in those five prayers, Surah Al-Fatiha is a must. There is no salah that is valid without reciting Surah Al-Fatiha in every rak'ah, as the hadith says. And in uh, and the last kind of evidence of Allah's mercy, SubhanAllah, what do we need more than anything else? We need guidance, right? We are absolutely, there is no, I cannot think of anything that is more uh, valuable than, than guidance, hidayah, right? And Allah, again, using the same logic, His same mercy, He knows that it's so precious, that is what we need the most. He makes it mandatory to ask for guidance in every rak'ah, in every prayer. Surah Al-Fatiha. Right? So, um, in every uh, Surah Al-Fatiha, what is the, the, the pinnacle ayah? You know, it's a dua. إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ mustaqim. Right? Allah makes it so that we cannot finish one rak'ah of one prayer without asking him for guidance to the straight path. Without us saying, Oh Allah, guide us to the straight path. He makes that a mandatory part of our prayer because he, what, he knows we need that so much and he wants to give it to us. Allah wants to, to us to go to Jannah. He wants us to go be guided, which is why he makes it mandatory for us to ask him for guidance so he can give, he can guide us. SubhanAllah, look at the beauty beauty there by central scholars have said anytime Allah inspires you to make dua for him anytime Allah inspires you to ask for forgiveness this is, this is, when I heard this I was mind blown that, is, that idea I, should make, I want to make dua today that idea itself that you want to make dua is a sign that Allah already intended to forgive you the fact that you want to make dua for asking for forgiveness that is a sign, that, I, that feeling that you make dua is a sign Allah already intended to forgive you. That's why He made you raise dua in the first place. When I first heard this, it transformed my mind. When you make a dua to Allah, and Allah inspires you, so many, people, so many Muslims, so many people don't bother to think to make dua. The fact that Allah brought you to the realization, you know, I want to make dua, I want to ask Allah, that in itself is a huge mercy and it's a sign Allah wants to give you the thing that you're asking for. And some say he's already forgiven you. That's why he asked you. That's why he allowed you to make dua for him. So subhanAllah, may we continue to observe the, the, the signs and proofs of Allah's mercy all around us. May Allah increase us in, in our love for him. And may he accept us and uh, all the good that we're doing.